Oh, wow. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for dropping in. Oh, there's a good word here. Uh, I'd like to ask you to join me and let's fellowship together on this edition of the Prophetic Chronicles. Talk to you in a minute. Now we come to Matthew 18 again. In case you wonder what happened, Rebecca did go, and she married Isaac. It was a God-given covenant. The reason the Lord had me going here to dealing with binding and loosing, because a lot of us have been praying to the Father for things. My mouth is so dry. Have been praying to the Father for things. The enemy is hindering it. Some of us, he, the Lord has put the mate he was talking about right in our path. And the enemy is trying to hinder that. He's trying to stop what God wants to do. Some of you, the Lord has blessed to get that new job. So that your finances can shape up. And the enemy is trying to hinder that. Some of you have children that God been using you to work with to try to help them to grow. And the enemy is trying to hinder that. Some of you had to file bankruptcy because your money got funny. And, and, and if it wasn't for one or two things, you would have it. But the devil is trying to hinder that. Now, before we bind and loose and close out, the Lord said to share this with you. In the book of Job, right? In the book of Job, Chapter 2, I believe it is. Chapter 2. Let me... Thank you, Lord. Chapter 2. Why is it? Um, well, I'll read verse 9. Well, I'll go to verse 7, said the Lord. Verse 6, said the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a pot shirt to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this Job did not sin with his lips. But it's something, here it is, in chapter 1, verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, it's a true statement that Job said that. If you were to tell somebody, well, the Bible says the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. It's a true statement that Job said that. But it's not a statement of truth. If you read chapter 1 and chapter 2, God didn't do anything. Chapter 1, Satan told him, you got a hedge of protection all around Job. I can't touch him. 
reach your hand down and strike everything he has, he'll curse you to your face. God said, all right, everything he has is in your power. The only thing God did is remove his hedge of protection. He didn't take nothing. Second chapter, skin for skin, a man will serve you long as he got his health. God said, all right, then you could touch his health, just don't touch him. You can't take his life. There was a limitation. But Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, which was wrong. How do we know? Well, we just, we can read what happened with Job and see how the devil did what he did. But let's notice also the book of James, chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So now we find that God is not a taker. John 10 and 10, the Lord said, the thief cometh not but to steal, comma, and to kill, comma, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life. And then the book of James, it tells us, don't say when you're tempted that God did it. Don't do that. Because that's not how he operates. Whenever, whenever a child of God needs something taken from them, the Lord allows the enemy to do it, but God don't do it. He don't do it. He don't do it at all. The point the Lord led me to bring those scriptures up is to let this be known. Point the finger at the devil. If anything bad is happening in your life. I was talking to, uh, well, I was talking to someone on the phone. And the phone hung up. She said it died. Praise the Lord. But that wasn't God. And we got to understand that we are, we are a living soul. The Bible says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. If you think you're a spirit, I'm, I'm a spiritual person. I'm a spirit. No, it don't say that. It says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Hell holds souls and souls into heaven. Spirit is the breath of God that keeps you up. So at, when the when a person dies, even animals, all that breath that's holding every living thing up goes back to God. And we are encased in flesh. Okay? Our flesh holds our soul, which is in the midst of us, but around that soul there's a spirit which is like a room that the Holy Ghost, if you're Holy Ghost filled, he lives in that room. If you're not Holy Ghost filled, demons and the devil himself could come in and out of your spirit. That's how people evil and lie and cheat and steal and kill and rape, rob, all of that. Those are demons that get in a person's spirit and they lead that flesh to go do this stuff. And the poor soul ain't got no defense. So the soul has no choice but to go with the spirit as he leads the body. Okay. We have to point the finger at the enemy and understand that he is after your soul. He wants your soul to live wrong so that when you leave this world, you don't go to heaven. And if he can accomplish that, then he's going to laugh at you in hell. So we have to understand those of us that are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, he cannot get in our spirit. No, greater is he, Scripture says, that is in us than he that is in the world. That's the enemy. So when we're Holy Ghost filled with the biblical evidence of speaking in other tongues, not chanting, not that ba 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 ba, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's chanting. It's like an Indian. 
Those of us that are Holy Ghost filled with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, the devil cannot get in our spirit because the Lord lives there. But he attacks our flesh. He oppresses our spirit by using our flesh. We have to point the finger at him and blame him for everything wrong that's happening to us. Now I know that some people say, well, they know I was the devil. That is true. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Brother Paul was led by the Holy Ghost to write this right here. Verse 1, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Now look at verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Led by who? Led by the enemy. Turn to the book of Ephesians, and let's notice verse, I mean chapter 2, where the scripture says this. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Then it says, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as, even as others. So we followed Satan before we came to Christ. We did what he wanted us to do. So he knows how to get us if he tried to trap us up. But if we're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If we do that, putting on the armor of God and understanding that we're fighting four classes of demons. Principalities, which is RK, which means chief demons. Powers, which are exousia, the forces of hell. Rulers of the darkness of this world, those are territorial demons that govern regions and areas and spiritual wickedness in high places, meaning in the heavenlies, the second heaven. Those are demons that come from the second heaven. Those are the foot soldiers. They come into the earth realm and cause all this chaos. It is them that will make a person challenge the blessing from God. It is them that will make a person leave God and go back out in the world. It is them that will make a man be a whoremonger. Because in the Bible, whoremonger means male prostitute. It don't mean female prostitute. That word is harlot. In the Greek, whoremonger is a male prostitute. So spiritual wickedness in high places, they are the ones that tell men, sell your body. They tell women, sell your body. Spirit, the, the territorial demons, which are rulers of the darkness of this world, those are territorial demons like the spirit of addiction, the spirit of perverseness, the spirit of um, uh, 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 um, sexual immorality, like homosexuality and all that, all, those are territorial demons that govern regions, and they got demons right under them that make people do the stuff that these demons up here want done. So, they also block our blessing. What we have to do, and I'm getting weak, what we have to do is bind and loose. Now I told you I've been fasting all day. I've been fasting, switching different kind of fast, but mainly an absolute, that's why my mouth is dry. Matthew 18, verse 18, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Bind is from the Greek word dale. And it means, and it's used 44 times in the New Testament, and it means to bind in various applications, literally or figuratively. Either way, it means to bind. 
It means 37 times to bind, one time to beat in bonds, one time to knit, four times to tie, one time to wind. So when you bind something, you tie them. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, he was teaching our demonology. And what he taught in chapter 12, verse 27. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, that's the Holy Ghost, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Now listen to this. Or else, how can you enter into a strong man's house? Now, this scripture, the devil is a strong man. That's what he's saying. How else can you enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man? And then he will spoil his house. So what he's saying, all those demons that work for Satan, that's attacking you. That's attacking your stuff. That's attacking your vision. That's attacking your family. That's attacking the blessing God is trying to give you. All of those demons that are trying to stand against you, you have to learn about binding and loosening because otherwise you won't be free. Oh, God, I hear the Lord saying, go to this other scripture. And we, we got to close because, oh, God, we got to close. Mark 9:29 And I know the Lord going to lead me to go back on this another time cuz we we got to stay focused. Mark 9:29. Let me go back to verse 28. And when he was come into the house his disciples asked him privately, "Why could not we cast him out?" And he said unto them, "This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. This kind. What was he talking about? Well, let me go to verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw, this is Mark 9 and 14. He saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. If you take your notes, please write that down. Dumb spirit. That means he can't talk. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. That means like he's almost dead, like he's dead. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he, he answered him and says, Oh, faithless generation, this is what the Lord said, How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Jesus said, How long do I got put up with y'all? Bring the boy to me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. So this demon, when when that man, when the man brought when they brought the boy to Jesus, the demons that were in that boy, they came and when they saw Jesus, they started throwing the boy all around, and Jesus standing there just looking. And Jesus said, "How long is it ago since this came unto him?" And he said, "Of a child." And all times it cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. This is what a lot of us need to say to the Lord. Because the devil is trying to steal your stuff and mess stuff up and everything. And you, you say your faith is not, is not producing no fruit. You're not, you're not getting through. You got to say to the Lord, Lord, I believe. I know you can do it. I know you can. But strengthen my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, now he's getting ready to move because the people came running together. And when they came, Scripture says,
When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. Write that down, foul spirit. So there's a dumb spirit, there's a foul spirit, and here's what he said, thou, dumb and deaf spirit. Now there's a deaf spirit too. I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Now again his disciples asked him, why couldn't we do that? And Jesus said, because this kind. He didn't say, like a lot of people say, oh, the Bible says that they come out only by fasting and prayer. No, he didn't say they. He said, this kind. This particular demon. Which one? The foul spirit. That was the territorial demon that made sure foulness was on this man's life. He sat over the man's life. And the ones that worked for him was the deaf and the dumb spirit. They worked for him. The deaf spirit, so the man can't hear a word of deliverance. The dumb spirit, so the man couldn't talk and ask for help. But Jesus, Jesus looked at the boy and he surpassed the flesh. He went past that which was natural. He looked down inside that man's spirit and he said to the foul spirit, he rebuked him. Rebuke means to correct. He corrected that foul spirit and said, thou dumb and deaf spirit, Come out of him and don't go in him no more. The spirit tore the man, threw him around. When you pray about stuff and God is, is blessing you, thank you, Lord. Sometimes you got to fight for the answer. Even though God said yes, you got to fight. Oh, you got to fight because the devil don't want you to have it. Even though God said it's yours. He might attack, again, sisters, if it's a husband and God showed you that's your husband, he might be, I ain't saying God ain't told me nothing. Well, it's because you might be in a place he not. Because if he was on point, he would see, even before you do. And to the sisters that God used a man of God to say, God said, you're my wife. It's because God showed that man and he see it. And the enemy's trying to stop you by messing with your mind. All these thoughts, suppose this, suppose that, suppose he not real, suppose he lying, suppose, 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 thoughts. The spirit of confusion. In the meantime, the man of God is going before God, crying, praying. And in the meantime, God is working on him, giving him more love for that woman. To where he can tell her, I love you. I love you. There's nothing like the love that God gives a man for a woman. Oh my goodness. God said, I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Isaiah 65, 24. Now let's do the binding and loosening thing and we out. I, I, it's too many. I don't know who need what but we're going to do it the holy ghost is telling me how to do this i'm listening to him tell you what right now let god use me as a prophet and to share a prophetic move with you take your hands and do like this okay do like this and see yourself holding the blessing in your hand Whatever it is you're praying to God for, and God said he's going to give it to you. Now, if God didn't say he's going to give it to you, if you don't know, then just stand like this in prayer. Because you, you, you don't, don't get out of the prayer, just stand there. But for those that God has said, I'm going to give you something, and here it is. Hold it right in your hand. And I'm going to pray. And walk with me as I walk with Christ, all right? Now, this is going to be a Holy Ghost-filled prayer. 
You might not have been involved in a prayer like this. There's not witchcraft. There's none of that. This is a Holy Ghost for a prayer. And the Lord has taught me how to fight demons. So uh, stick with me as I stick with God. All right. Father, now I'm holding something too, believe it or not. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins and shortcomings of false and wrongs. Please forgive us. Please, Father, forgive us for everything we have said, done, thought, and felt that's against your will, your word, your way. Stuff we know about and don't know about, stuff we intentionally did and didn't intentionally do, please just forgive us. Wash us whiter than snow in Jesus' name. And Father, now after saying that, and we're all made righteous according to 1 John 1 and 9, please lead me in this prayer. Satan, I bind you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Not my own, because I ain't got none. But by the power of the Holy Ghost, I bind you. I tie you with your hands at your side and render you powerless, meaning you can't do nothing. You're bound. I plead the blood of Jesus against you as a shield of protection, not just on my behalf, but on behalf of my brothers and sisters that are joining in this prayer with me. I plead the blood against you and we loose our stuff from your grip. And we plead the blood of Jesus over it as a covering so you can't touch it. And we command you to go back to the pit of hell from where you came. And every demon that works for you, that hindering spirit, that lying spirit, the spirit of confusion, the backbiting spirit, the blackballing spirit, the spirit of gossip, the spirit of jealousy and envy, the spirit of rebellion, any and every demon, it don't matter who they are, it don't matter what their rank is, any demon and all demons working for you, we cast them out of our life and our affairs. We rob you of your house and we loose our stuff from their grip too. And we plead the blood of Jesus over our stuff as a cover. We command those demons to go back to the pit of hell from where they came as well. And we forbid you, according to Mark 9 and 29, we forbid you to come back this way again. Leave our stuff alone. Father, in Jesus' name, dispense holy angels to come into the earth realm right now. To go where the people are that just prayed this prayer with me by faith, dispense holy angels to come and to take up the spot that those demons were at. So that way holiness is available and present right now. And that way when them demons try to come back, like it says in Matthew 12, how that unclean spirit travels over dry ground looking for rest because demons can't travel over water because water is a symbol of purification. They travel over dry ground looking for rest. When they can't find out, they come back to the house they just left. They said, I will go back to the house I just came from, which is that person's life. They come back and when they see a sweat and garnish and clean, they go, go get seven other demons worse than themselves and come back. And now the man is in a worse shape than he was before. But but if there's holy angels standing in that spot, then when that demon comes and see the holy angels there, they cannot enter in because the holy angels stand on guard and say, no, no. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being our God. And thank you for hearing our prayer. And for blessing us and for answering us and we're gonna hold you to this we're gonna hold you to this we're gonna hold you you said 
in Isaiah 65, 24. Now you said come boldly. That means I've spoken. I'm coming. Isaiah 65, verse 24. You said, I will answer them before they even call to me. So before you ordained this broadcast to go on tonight, Lord, you was answering prayers already. And we just thank you. You said, I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. We thank you, mighty God, for hearing us and for answering us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The ministry's number is 475-300-3850. You can call 24 hours. If you want more prayer, you can call. If you have a question about the lesson we were just into, you can call. You can call, and we'll talk. We'll talk. This ministry is standing with you. Also, on Facebook, there's a cash out link. Free will offerings are welcomed. You're not commanded to do anything, but it'd be a blessing from your heart. You'd be a blessing to the ministry so God use, can use us to help other ministers and other ministries. And there's even another ministry that's in my spirit to be a blessing to as the Lord lead, but let God use you to be a blessing. And those of you at home watching by television, free will offerings that the, the link is on the screen, the Cash App link. It'll be on the screen right here between my hands. And yes, let me see. Right, right between my hands. And you can go to that link on the internet and share love offering through the Cash App link. You could do a reoccurring once a month love offerings or just a one time. It's up to you. That's between you and God. That's between you and God. Some say, Apostle, can I pay tithes? Listen, according to scripture, the way a lot of ministers are teaching about tithing, they're wrong. They're bamboozling you. Here's the deal. And it says in the first Corinthians 16, whatever the Lord put in your heart to share, you share that. Ain't nobody business how much you get so that they could determine the tenth. And in the Old Testament, 10% does not mean the tithe. The word ma'azra in Hebrew, it does not mean 10% of your income. It just means the tenth, the tenth part, and tenth. That's all it means. In the New Testament, Jesus used that word twice to rebuke the Pharisees, saying you tithe mint, cumin, and rue. Those are spices. But you leave the other stuff undone, meaning the inward part. He said you do all this outward stuff, but the inside of you is all messed up and jacked up. So, just let God use you. Again, thank you for tuning in with the ministry. And I need to, I need prayer. And I'm saying God bless you. Thank you. And may heaven smile upon you. Whew, wow. <laughs> that was deep. That was deep and such a blessing. Thanks for joining me, and uh, I look forward to seeing you the next time where we dip back into the library to notice the prophetic chronicles. God bless you, and enjoy your day.